Welcome back to the Dopey Show. You won't get sick of. I'm Spencer, and this is Sasha. I spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9, 2010. Got a lot of stories about the dumb stuff I did to get put in prison. Also got a lot of stories about the crazy stuff that happened when I was actually in prison. And God forbid you end up in prison, you want to make some of the same mistakes I made. So this guy was actually a friend of mine. And I, I wouldn't say like a best friend, but he liked boxing. I love combat sports. I hate football. Can't stand baseball. It, it, just none of it. I don't like any of that. But I love boxing. I love MMA. I love anything to do with, you know, two people fighting. That's what I love. I mean, it, it's changed my life, you know, training. Um, but anyway, so this guy gave me his magazine. Got Ring Magazine. He passed it to me when he get done with him. And uh, he got himself in a little bit of trouble, a little bit of a predicament. Now, he had already graduated the Art App Drug Program. He was waiting to go home. If you get in trouble after you graduate, they'll take that year that they give you off your sentence. They'll take it back. Now, if you get in trouble after you graduate, it's going to add 18 months on your sentence. And let me explain how. If you're doing five years, you do about four years and three months with good time and the feds on five years. So you get a year off for doing the RDAP drug program, pond completion. It's a nine-month program. So that takes you four years and three months to three years and three months. Okay? And then... You get six months halfway house, which takes you down to two years and nine months. It almost takes your sentence down in half of what you were originally sentenced if you got five years. Okay? So, he got in trouble. He did something stupid. You're supposed to act right once you graduate the program. They typically don't let you do the program until you're right ready to go home. So, as soon as you graduate, you go home. There was a lack of people in the pro, so I did it a little bit early. And I got in a couple fights after I did. I got lucky, but at the low security, there aren't any cameras. You get away with a fight. A lot of, fi oh, a lot more fist fights at the low security than the medium, but a lower level of violence. So there's that. So anyway, in the visiting room, depending on who's working, it depends on how much you can get by with. Okay, you can straight up make out your girlfriend probably a good 15, 20 seconds at the start, and at the end when they say wrap it up, probably a minute and a half if it's the good people. I mean, that's just what it is, but in terms of doing stuff in the visit, you, you're playing with fire. Now, there were some people that would give you a little bit of slack, but I mean, actually, you know, um, you know, doing some, doing some dirt, doing some nasty, um, you know, stuff, you were playing with fire. There were some people, I mean, some, for some petty stuff, they got thrown in the hole, okay? This guy was doing, he, he, he stepped across the line way too far. He got a little handsy. He got a little handsy all the way down, okay? He, he had, yeah, yeah, he, he had his fingers going. Okay, let's just say that. He got caught. He got in trouble. He got put in solitary confinement. And he got a shot. Now, a shot is, you know, punishment, institutional punishment. They take commissary visits, phone, email, and now they take MP3. That's one of the things. They take, basically, they take your family from you. And they take you from your family. So it's a messed up system that they starve you with commissary. Take that away. Then they take away your visits, phone, everything else. It's messed up. Okay. Their punishments um, hurt way more than just the inmate. They, they hurt families. And the feds have a bad reputation for sending somebody to another coast if you piss them off bad enough. Try to send me to Texas because I wouldn't tell my buddy Pinto. Pinto's on a video or two on here with me. And, uh, you know, I kept my mouth shut. It's my best friend, you know. And uh, anyway, when I got back to the low, you know, I got a warm welcome. The Bariquas, they all welcome me. That's Puerto Rican in case you didn't know. But anyhow, this guy went to the hole. He got let back out of the drug program. They said, listen, we're not going to take you a year. But you got to start going back to the program. If you graduate the program, the program goes from 7.40 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. That's when you sit on the carpet. You roll the carpet up. they got speakers, play music, try to make this whole big spectacle. Okay, it's uh, foolish. It, it's not a drug program. It's a behavioral modification program. So the actual addicts are getting absolutely nothing. And I will argue and I will win with anybody who tries to argue with me about RDAP being a, uh, a good drug program, okay, because it's not. I, I know drug treatment, okay. You know, you talk, you're talking to an addict right here. I was addicted to dealing. I was addicted to using. I know quite a bit about it. Um, and this was not a program 
and it was foolish. It was foolish is what it was. But he, if you graduated, you just had to come to the carpet, which means you had to come to the program one day a week, sit through it. That was it. So he had to come back five days a week, sit on the carpet, do the program. Not only that, they wanted him to be active in the program. You're supposed to tell on three people a month, not for things that could get them put in the hole, not for things that could get them more time or privileges taken, anything that would be an institutional charge. They're program things like... Uh, you know, talking too loud, and then you'd have to sit in a timeout chair accordingly to the hours. So tell me how a timeout chair is supposed to help freaking addiction, okay? You sit in a chair with the empty chair in front of you, and while everybody else watching TV, they sit down in front of you, you write stuff down. I hated it. So I paid this guy Fishbone, and uh, my medications I got from Pill Line, he like snort him well butrin or two, or 20. Uh, he spent all his money on that, and you know, I paid him. I said, listen, you get me? You know, I, I don't ever go up there. If they do tell on me, you make my issue last, and then you sweep it under the rug, so I'll sit in those stupid timeout chairs. That's what's up with it. And yeah, paid him so I didn't have to do that. But anyway, this guy's expected to be active, be super inmate, and there were a bunch of inmates that loved telling on people. They called them positive pairs. Okay, positive peers, all these people claiming they were gangsters selling bricks on the street. And they're, they're in a group of people that does super telling on everybody. Tell me how that works. <sighs> clown, clowns, clowns. You know, fabrication, lies, everything they talk about themselves. But anyhow, uh, I made friends with a couple of them. They were youngins. They get kicks out of getting people up there and getting them in trouble and watching them flip out, watch their reaction. My buddy Dickie, who was a fake Muslim, I used to sell dope to him. I used to bring him... And his uh his awful, awful middle aged woman girlfriend, uh he was like twenty eight and he had this girlfriend like forty five, fifty with hard lines in her face, big old fake implants, about the size of a pinky and he's like showing me a picture like, Yeah, look look how hot she used to be and I'm like, Too bad you didn't catch her then, bud. Uh, they'd get him up there because he'd have a reaction. They'd tell lies on him because he'd get I didn't do that, I didn't do that and you were just supposed to take it. Well anyway, there's this guy, Bobby Joe. Bobby Joe isn't his real name. It's pretty close to it. Bobby Joe looked like the Keebler cookie man if he was inbred, okay? Big old round belly, tiny limbs, tan leathery skin. Looked like he was 70 years old, and it blew my mind to know that he was 55 years old. I was his roommate for a little bit of time, and, uh, you know, he was the funniest person in there if you didn't live with him. There's a funny story about him getting smacked by his roommate, I'll tell her. He talked like this and called everybody honey. And, you know, that's how some of them country people from Tennessee, he'd never seen a black person until he went to prison. His little country, Tennessee town, he'd never seen a black person. Me and him, we'd get to bickering sometimes, you know. He'd crack me up. He chased a, a chomo around the drug unit. Yeah, some chomos got the year off. I disagree with that. But there's a, if they didn't have a hands-on case and it was minute and they could prove drugs, he chased this chomo around the room with a piece of cheese one evening saying, want some cheese right? Because the chomo told on him, but he did set the chomo up to get in trouble. And uh, it was funny. But anyhow, we were talking. The little guy who I'm talking about that got in trouble had to come back. You know, Mr. Fingers, we'll call him. Mr. Fingers um, didn't, he wasn't even there. But he came over. Somebody told him so he'd come over and do it. You know, get me or get him. And he went up the next day and held us accountable, which means he tells on us to get us punishments. And he didn't even see it. Okay. I had a particular issue with that. First off, you told on me. Second off, you told on me and you didn't witness it, so you lied to get me in trouble. Big mistake. Now, the DTSs, they call them drug treatment specialists. I don't know what six-month certificate course they took to get it, but they didn't know a dang thing about drug treatment. They, they caught on that I was paying off one of the guys and that I wasn't having to do punishments, stuff like that. So I had to sit in this timeout chair. Even though, you know, I had people on the payroll, they made sure that I said, I, and, you know, it told me it was on to me, too. I was mad. I was furious. I sat there angry as could be, and I said, I'll get you. I'll get you. I'm going to get you. So I went to what I call what we call gunners. See, I made cheesecake every three, week, uh, three weeks. I made an incredible cheesecake. And the reason it was incredible, most people that made cheesecake didn't even put cheese in it. That's just the truth. There's a way to do it, coffee, cream, or lemon juice, where it locks together like a Dairy Queen blizzard. You hold it upside down on the spoon, and it sticks like a baseball. Now, I haven't been able to find the generic old coffee creamer. That, you have to have this generic type of coffee creamer, or it'll be gritty. When I find that, I'll show you how to make it. But anyway, I put, you know, they had cream cheese in the packs, 55 cents a pack. I'd put 20 packs in it. 
So, I mean, it was a real cheesecake. And then you put it in the uh, office trash can. You never use it for trash. In a bowl that was sealed. And then ice on top of it from the ice machine. And I'd salt the ice so it would lock it up. The next night it'd be ready. I'd give a piece to all the gunners, the people that told on people. And basically they knew, don't tell on me. I'm not going to cause any problems. I sit there quiet. I don't make a whole lot of noise. And that night, I wasn't making a lot of noise. Bobby Joe made the noise. I didn't. But I got in trouble for it. So I took offense to this. Um, and uh, I went to these gunners who I'd give a piece of cheesecake. And I'd put a bounty on him. I said, I, and I have a, um, it's a ha I've got a house that I rent out. That I ran out the entire time I was in prison. It's fully paid for. It's not a. It's not, it's a piece of trash house. Just being honest with you. I mean, it ain't worth a whole lot. But if there's a renter in it paying six hundred a month, I mean, I was using six hundred a month on commissary. So I mean, I was living nice because of that house. Um, I had enough money basically, and I had. I hold a grudge. I get mad, especially when it's something I didn't do. You know what I mean? And somebody going to tell on me I wasn't being loud. I know I wasn't being loud because I was telling him, be quiet, man, you're going to get us in trouble. I remember telling him that. I offered these people a dollar for every hour they got them in the timeout chairs. That week, he got more hours than he was capable of doing in the next three weeks. He got probably 50, 60 hours in these timeout chairs. He went and cried to the DTSs, and he was sitting in those timeout chairs every day, and they're like, well, listen, you still have to do those timeout chairs, you know, but we're not going to make you keep on coming back to the carpet because they are targeting you. It's obvious they're targeting you, and I was sitting there smiling the whole time. You know, he wouldn't even look at me. He was so mad. He'd, he'd just make a face and walk by me, not make eye contact, and I'd smile at him, look at him like this as he's walking by, like, hey, how you doing? You having a good day? Oh, uh, he's a piece of trash. And, you know, but my, they, they were youngins. They were these youngins. They were mostly from uh, Pennsylvania. And they were driving to uh, West Virginia to the colleges to sell dope. And they were like, most of them were like between the ages of 20 and 20, like probably 19 to 22. Um, and they were, they got kicks at it holding people accountable. They lit him up. Oh, man. And I'd sit there and smile from the TV, every commercial. I'd just sit over there and look at it and smile. Yeah, I was petty as could be. But yeah, I paid those people to do that, and that was petty. And you know what? I'd do it again. He shouldn't have told on that. He didn't witness it first off. Second off, I wasn't being loud. I hated those timeout chairs. Okay, I'm like, I've either got Asperger's or autism. It's been suggested by a handful of counselors, okay? There are certain things I cannot stand. I cannot stand people going through my stuff. See, I was going through my cell, I'd tell them, listen, Okay, in my locker, I've got a trash can. It's got ice and it's got kitchen food. And if you got an issue with that, go ahead and get it so you can be on out of here. You know, because I'll sit there the whole time and just I feel this bang coming out of the middle of my forehead and my face getting red. I get so mad. Um, and I can't stand being put up on display to be laughed at and embarrassed. You know, I don't play with people a certain way because I don't like being played with a certain way either. And, you know, he shouldn't have done that. He shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have done that at all. And I had the senior peers, the four inmates that had graduated the program that got paid $150 a month plus their bribes to run the program. I had them on it too, so they gave him, they made sure he got burned up. Um, yeah, it was petty. Anyway, if you liked the video, press the like button. If not, that's 13 minutes and 38 seconds of your life in which you will never, ever get back. Dealing with a little health issue right now. I'm in a good bit of pain. That's why I missed comments for a couple of days. Um, it's it's been a little bit sucky and you know i try to go back and answer as many of them as possible i try to answer everyone on the video when i do answer comments i go all the way from top to bottom i take a lot of pride in that i think i answer more comments than anybody in any other channel to be honest with you and i try to answer them thoroughly answer them thoroughly if it's a question about addiction fitness nutrition anything like that i answer them in depth i've written some people you know pages worth of comments in a comment section um, so sorry for the last couple of days as not been as many as typical because I really do take pride in doing that. Also, Anthony Vera Kelly, um, somebody knows what's up with him, you know, let me know. Um, hadn't seen him in a couple of days and he's always on here. He'll respond to people. You feeling down or something? Anthony will bring you back. That's a good, I've got a good bunch of people here. And if you're new here, you need to know that it's a good bunch of people that, you know, that if you feeling down to bring you back up, I always that, that was what I'd hoped for. I didn't think it possible with how sucky people are in general, but I think I've got the best people 
in my comment, you know, that are here, part of this with me. Um, you know, I, I said I don't have friends. I don't want friends. Uh, can't trust people. People will screw you over sooner or later. But being on here, I changed my mind about that. People in here have become my friends. A lot of these people have. And, you know, um, I'm lucky. I'm really lucky because it's it's a good bunch on here. And just know that, you know, um, it, it's something I believe in. Sometimes all people need is somebody to listen. And if somebody just listen to them for a minute, it can walk them off a ledge if they're feeling like doing something stupid, you know including myself if i'm feeling bad sometimes you know after you talk about it you feel better and that's something i believe in so if you're new here add something you know got a good bunch of people here and just know that there really is if you got something going on you mentioned in the comment section they're going to be people that say something to you and they're going to talk to you and they're not just going to say oh that sucks they're going to talk to you and um it's a good bunch of people here so thank you for those of y'all who've been here and welcome new people who just got here all right